We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? You're right, Jared. How are you today? Oh, that was, that was real low energy out of you. I'm, I'm, we're going to try that again. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing right, Jared. How are you? <laughs> that was that was like 20% better. <laughs> it was like 20% better. 20%. Now, Kyle, do you think 20% better was sufficient? Is twenty is twenty no. percent better sufficient? No. Okay. Maybe next time. Maybe next time you can shoot uh, for thirty. We'll, we'll do better next time. We'll do better next time, or we won't. <laughs> how, how 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 long has that been? Uh, how long has that been not true? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, today today we are answering your questions here. If you Want to ask a question and have us answer it for you? Join us. Join us down in the um, in our Discord and become a. Uh, uh, actually, you don't have to become a, um, a Patreon. You just you just be active in our in our Discord, and um, yeah, you can you can start asking questions, and we'll answer it from there. Yeah, we we have, we have a we have a line of questions here, Jared. And I think there was one we wanted to spend a little bit more time on, but we'll we'll answer some questions here. Whenever, All right. Whenever Which you one do you ready. want to spend more time on? <laughs> oh, you want to you want to do that one right off the top? Is the decentralization of the NCAA truly what college football needs? No. I, I you don't need you don't need anything to happen to the NCAA. the The big boys in college football simply need to leave it. What happens to the NCAA <laughs> is irrelevant. It's just that college football needs to decide it no longer needs the NCAA. The NCAA can keep running all the other sports. That's fine. That's mm -hmm. um, the NCAA uh, doesn't need to fall apart. It just needs to be left alone. It just needs to be left behind. I, I so think decentralization. The one no, because it can still do the other sports. The NCAA doesn't need to fall apart. Like I said, it just. You need to start ignoring it. That's all. Complete divorce by college football. Yeah. Initiated by the college football teams. Yes. So you're not decentralizing it, it. You're leaving it. You're divorcing it. I think the question that you wanted to spend a lot of time on was uh, this one. It's saying, um, we had a question asking, um, when, when do we get a sloop cast Big Ten win to loss prediction episode. Win to loss prediction episode. I uh, we can do that right now. We can do that right the hell now. I don't know. I I could I could do the rest of the episode on this if you wanted to. Do you want to slip any other questions in real quick and then just do a Big Ten preview? I'm I'm okay with that. All right. Uh, let me let me look at some of these questions here. Um, What's the dumbest thing you've ever heard of an Ohio State player doing? Um, you know, Stoneburner getting, I mean, like, okay, so, like, are we talking about, like, dumb, dumb? Or, I mean, I feel, feel like dumb in this case means, like, goofy dumb, right? Like, silly dumb, not like, you know, stupid dumb. Um, I think Stoneburner getting, like, arrested for public urination is kind of goofy dumb right yes. um yeah what was it so it was jake stoneburner right am i confusing yeah, that? I was pretty sure. yeah yeah let me look hold on make if listen if we're, if, we're, if we're talking about a crime that happened we should probably know for sure right recently no 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 while he was in school like he was i think it was during the memorial tournament if i remember correctly uh it was it, like it was stoneburner and um Muhort. Yeah. And I think they mostly got in trouble because they 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 ran away <laughs> too. Yeah, this was this was back in ten years ago. This was ten years ago, Jared. I would have guessed it was longer, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> well, because they they even tried to get him on like a bigger charge because the cop got hurt while he was fleeing. So they tried to like tack something on that yeah. was like the fact that the cop got like 
some sort of small injury while chasing him. Um, but yeah, it was I, I, it, nothing. Nothing serious came of it. As far as like stupid dumb, now all sorts of Ohio State players have done some real stupid shit. But we don't, we don't we don't need to go into that. Here's another good question, Jared. Uh, will Ryan Day be considered an underachieving Ohio State head coach every year until he wins a natty, regardless of the season and recruiting outcome? At a certain point, yes. We aren't there yet, though. Like, well, here, these here, are... here, here, here's, here's, here's a good point, Jared. I mean, here, here, here's, here's something. So Ohio State's previous coach, Urban Meyer, successful because he won a natty. Uh-huh. And then, be, then before that, not counting the not counting the the um, twenty ten year, the the previous head coach, Trestle, mm-hmm. won a title. Mm-hmm. Previous coach from there, Cooper, did you not could say he was. Yep, and he did not win a Natty. And then the coach before that did not. Did not coach before that did um but here here's here here's the thing and like uh kabuta says all ohio state coaches must win a natty in year two um we, we're now entering ryan days is this would be the third year yes um here's the thing though all, every other coach. Four. Yeah, I was gonna say this is, four. This is, this I, is I wasn't. Four. I I blanked on the COVID year. So did everybody. Yeah, I blanked on the COVID year. Yeah. Um, the 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 difference between Ryan Day and say Jim Tressel or Urban Meyer, who both won national titles in their second year, is that this is Ryan Day's first year as a head coach or his first tenure as a head coach. He came in Mm -hmm. never being a head coach before. So while Urban Meyer won a national title in his second ever year as Ohio State's Big Ten coach, or Ohio State's head football coach, he took many, many years to win a national title. Yeah, Trestle had uh, three FCS titles. Uh, Urban Meyer had uh, national titles at Florida, uh, lots of success at Utah and Bowling Green. Um, so it's uh, not, I don't think it's fair to be like, Ryan, they should have a national title by now. Eh, like, I that, I don't think that's a fair expectation. Now, eventually, he, he is going to need to win one or he's going to be a disappointment. I just don't think that we're at that point yet because he's only coached three seasons and one of those seasons was half of a season. Doesn't, Mm -hmm. shouldn't even really count. Um, Or at least you can kind of give him a buy on it, right? Yep. Yeah, I I guess to answer that question, I guess technically, yes. (laughs) based on the history with um, Ohio state coaches. So I would say, I would say, yes, it's, it's a lot Eventually, of, pre- it's a lot of yes, pressure. But I it's don't a- think we're there yet. No, no, no. I mean, it, it is, it is the head coaching position at Ohio state. So it's, that's, that is the expectation. Tired of COVID year excuses. It's not an excuse. It's, these are facts. Ohio state between the Clemson game and the Alabama game, had one padded practice because of COVID tests, because of contract contract tracing and all of that. They only had one padded practice. They were already going up against a lot because it's fucking Alabama. And then on top of that, they only had one padded practice for that entire period in between. Bama had... A lot more. And by the way, from an they stuck with Bama for a while. We still would have lost to them. We still would have lost to that team. Maybe, probably. Might have been closer at the end. You but, were already yeah. you were already behind the eight ball. You were already the underdog. 
And then on top of that, you had one pad. You know what I mean? Like, if it was 60-40, like 40 is not bad. You're the underdog. If it was a 60-40 situation, now you have one padded practice. Now it's down to 80-20. They were missing yeah. a bunch of players, Mike. They were on top, and then on top of that, they were missing defensive tackles. They, they were down a ton of players. Uh, I'll, I'll say it. I don't know why everyone's afraid to say it. Clemson was not testing their players. The ACC was not forcing Clemson to test their players. Clemson was not testing their players, and they infected the fuck out of Ohio State. They absolutely infected Ohio State, and because Ohio State was still playing by the rules, they got screwed. Yeah, I don't think I don't think we need to get too much into that because um, I think we want to spend the majority of the episode here, Jared, um, with the, the this first question here. Um, doing a Big Ten win to loss prediction. Yeah. Of of all the, of all the teams here. So how, how do you how do you want to tackle this? Do you want to just do, pick do a we team just want to do do we just want to do, do we just want to do win losses? Um, mm-hmm. I feel like that might get a little dry if we just do win losses. Um, I think I'd rather do like maybe ranks, especially since we're already what okay. like 10, 12 minutes into this episode. I think I'd rather maybe just do like division ranks and then maybe some superlatives at the end. I found an Athlon article, by the way, that was just posted two days ago. That is there like a Big Ten football 2022 predictions by Stephen Lassen. Lassen. I'm going to go Lassen. Um, Updated June 10th, which is only two days ago for, for us. So I, I, I say let's because, you know, we, we weren't we're not doing like a full episode. We're not doing like a full preview. This is an ask, ask Sloopcast thing. So um, let's just run through this article and, and see if we uh, agree or not. You want to do it that way? OK, All right. I'm good with that. Yeah, you, you got the link. I got the link here. All right. All right. So yeah. he has in the East, Indiana coming in dead last. Thoughts on that? Uh yeah, I I think so. I think I think I Yeah, I think I, I would have Indiana last here. I, I I definitely would agree with that. Uh yeah. I, I, I think I think I think their year to shine has come and passed. I, I yeah. think they need to have a couple of um, good recruits and have a magic, a magical season. And this is not that year. Uh, then he has Rutgers I mean, I mean, at I mean, six. I mean, last year Indiana didn't win a. I mean, I'm no. looking at the article here. Man, Indiana no, they, did they not. They went over. They did not win a Big Ten conference game. Over. Ugh. Yeah, it was not. It was not good. It was not good. Yeah. All right. I, Who's next, Jared? He has Rutgers at six. No. Mm-mm. I wouldn't have my Rutgers at six. I think I would have I would have Maryland at six. I would have Maryland yeah, at six. Yeah, R- Rutgers to me feels like, dare I say it, at worst five. Rutgers is better than Indiana. They're better than Maryland. Um, I... I, I am not high on Maryland. Uh, I feel like a lot of teams are are vastly overrating Maryland. I I don't see. I I I just don't see it. I don't I don't see. Uh, too young Lova. Uh, God, it butchered that. Um, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. I'm out of practice on that one. Um, I I I don't see him getting better in a significant enough way. Their defense is, is fine. I think their defense is well coached. I don't think it has enough talent and I don't think they have enough offense for the defense to, to do anything. Um, 
because as good as their defense was schematically, once they started playing against like actual Big Ten talent, like once they started playing in the Big Ten East, their season fell apart. They had a real good start to their season last year. Then they fell apart. Um, I just I don't see them having the talent to to matter, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I. So so do you agree with our list here that you would have Maryland at six? I I'm yeah, probably uh, Maryland at six, Indiana at seven. Um, but man, I'm, I'm far closer to putting Maryland at seven than I am putting them at five, though. I think six is the right answer. But if you told me I couldn't pick six, I think I'd put him at seven. I, I do not get why people are high on Maryland. Don't get it. I. I don't know. I don't know, to be honest. But we'll, we'll stick with Maryland at six now. Maybe you put maybe you put Rutgers at five. But dare I yeah. say, yeah, yeah. Now, 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 I'm going to entertain this, Jared. I'm going to entertain this. Okay. What if I say that Rutgers makes it to fourth? Um, and then in fifth, I would have in state. That, I feel like that's like the love for for Rutgers going a little too far. Um, like, because I don't like Sean Clifford, but he's not going to let Penn State fall apart that bad. Because like Sean Clifford's not bad, bad. He's just very inconsistent. So he's yeah. not, he's not good. He's wildly inconsistent is, is the problem. But even a wildly inconsistent Sean Clifford is still good enough to get them forth in the Big Ten East, okay. I think. All right. So I'll, at least fourth. I'll, all right. I'll, I'll stick with Rutgers at fifth and then Penn State at fourth then. Yeah. Uh, three or four, probably four. It's them and I think it's them and Sparty. Um, but I... <laughs> It's just hard with Sparty because of the uh, amount of people who both left and came because they're so transfer portal focused. And like it worked out for them last year, right? But mm -hmm. I don't know. There's such a weird question mark that I have a real hard time. Like Michigan State could very realistically be anywhere from two to five for me. I, and I mean that. They could be second. They could be fifth. And I won't be surprised. They are just such an unknown to me and like i said just because just because the transfer portal stuff worked out for them last year i don't think that that's automatically me thinking that they will this year um because they brought in some good guys they did they brought in some really good guys they lost some really good guys um it, it might if 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 the transfers go exactly the way they want to, I think they can challenge for second. But that's a big if. Because if the transfers don't work out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree. I, th I think Michigan State right now at three, just I really like what I saw from Michigan State last year. Just they're, lo they're just losing too many key players. Uh, to be able to move up to that number two spot. So I think I would keep Sparty at two and then Michigan at putting Sparty Michigan at two, at two have, have Sparty at three, Michigan at two, okay. then Ohio State one. Yeah. Well, well, the, 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 the uh, thing is that <laughs> Sparty's got to score a point somewhere. <laughs> Here's I, the thing. I, their defense is going to be good. Here's the thing. And it's it's currently being said, and I agree with him, uh, down in the chat, our, our, our good friend, the duck man, I'm calling him the duck man now, uh, is he's making a good point that Michigan lost a lot too. And like gang duck, uh, not duck land. Uh, the, my, my issue with Michigan is not just that they lost a lot of talent because they did. They also lost both of their coordinators. Like that, that cannot be understated. That cannot be overlooked. Um, 
all of Harbaugh's flirting with the NFL pissed off his coaching staff. Um, I, I could, I, Michigan still has a lot of talent, but they lost a lot of talent. But man, those cord that coordinator loss to me, because not just that they lost the coordinators, but when they lost the coordinators, like by the time the coordinators left, a lot of the good coordinators had already taken jobs. Um, I'm gonna I'm just gonna say this. I think it's Ohio State one, and I just don't think anyone else is close. I really don't. The Big Ten East is it's always there for Ohio State to take, but I don't I don't I don't like any of these other teams enough to put them at two. Mm-mm. I I, yeah. I don't like any of these teams enough to put them at two. That's one of the one of the reasons why I think Michigan State is in I, I think a real good reach to get to number two. It just I, it's just hard to say because, like I said, it's such talent turnover that it's it's hard to say anything about Michigan State, in my opinion, with a great deal of certainty. Yeah. Rutgers yeah, will win it all over my dead body. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a down, definitely going to be a down year this year. I'd, I'd be really I'd be really surprised to see yeah. from like even like Penn State to get. 10 wins this year. But high high state really right. should run this run this division. Yeah. Just, all right. Just, uh, just decimate it. All right. The West the West division here. They start off with number seven and dead last Northwestern. Yeah, yeah. I I can't can't disagree with that. Just just like with Indiana, maybe maybe they might have one recruiting season or one year where they just got it all together and make some, some noise. That's it. Some noise. And that's not this year. North Northwestern needs to stockpile and develop talent. They are not a team that can reload. They had a couple really good years. Those couple good years are going to be followed up by some bad years. That's, that's just how Northwestern rolls. Um, they, they, get where they get by way of playing and developing players and then maybe just having enough dudes be fifth or maybe in, in because of 2020, some sixth year seniors on the team, get enough of them old and developed and experienced at the same time. And then they make a run. Well, here, here, this article brings up that every year. This year is not going to be one of those years. It's they're probably, if not seventh, then maybe, maybe sixth. Um, why not? Why not? Why not number one? Why not number one? <laughs> this this they article just brings have up the a, talent this year. This art, yeah. This article brings up a good point here. The last two odd year campaigns, nineteen and twenty one, Northwestern went three and nine. The last two even years, eighteen and twenty. They won the Big Ten West. Okay, well, I'm not a numerologist and I don't care. (laughs) I agree. Like, they they just don't have the talent right now. (laughs) Just facts be facts. They don't have talent right now. I don't don't think they should be at seventh. I think they should be at sixth. Um, I, I, I still think, I still think Illinois, Illinois is seventh unless they aren't. I'll believe Illinois is not seventh when at the end of the year, they're not seventh. You know, you know, Up until I, that I, point, know, I believe Illinois will be seventh. I'll, I'll agree with you then, actually. We'll, we'll put we'll put Illinois seventh, Northwestern sixth. I, I, you, you convinced me. We'll, yeah. we'll move Northwestern up a spot. <laughs> uh, let's see. Number five. Ne- number five, they have Nebraska. I think, yes. I think, yeah. Can't, can't forget about Burton, Illinois. <laughs> yeah, I can. Just the watch me. <laughs> <laughs> Moving Tell me on. What to do. <laughs> Nebraska uh, have, at fifth, have, I think, is one of the easiest picks. Other other than Ohio State at number one in the East, I feel like Nebraska at fifth is perfect. 
I, I think I think this is because if if we're breaking up the the Big Ten West into tiers, at the bottom of like in tier F, there's Illinois and Northwestern. At tier A, there's Minnesota, Iowa, Purdue, and Wisconsin. And in tier C, it's it's just Nebraska. Well, here, so I think Nebraska at five is perfect. Is, is this the year for is this a is this the year for Scott Frost if he if he if he doesn't do well this this year? Well, he they, better not finish cut? fifth like I think he will. Like, like how many fifth, how many years for him? How many years do they does Nebraska have to kind of just like and eh, we'll give them one more year? How, like how much longer is it going to be? How much if is they it? finish fifth this year? Like I think they will be. This will be it. He can't finish fifth in the West. If he finishes fifth in the West, he's done. He right. he needs uh, to at least be in the conversation for winning the West in November. I'm not saying he has to win the West, but he it better be within reach in November. Well, let's, within let's, a let's game or two in November. Let's look at their schedule real quick. Oh, but let's, let's let's see let's see how many wins. Let's see how many wins, Jared. All right, first game, first game, Northwestern. Win. Yeah. North Dakota. Win. Wait a minute. Which North Dakota? <laughs> No, they're fine. Just Win. North Dakota. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Georgia Southern. When? They should. Right? They should win that. Isn't that? Isn't that the team that they lost last year to? Um, they're they're the Sun Belt team, right? They'll, they they should win that game, right? Didn't didn't they lose to a? Uh... Maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. There was somebody who lost to like Georgia Southern or, or something. I, in the Big Ten, sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, either way, um, getting back here. So we'll say when. All right. And then their fourth game, home to Oklahoma. Loss. The loss. Mm -hmm. By the way, I don't uh, even like Oklahoma this year, but that's still a loss. Yeah. Then they play Indiana. They should win that. They should the, win that. They should win that. Okay. Okay. Rutgers. I'm going to say they lose to Rutgers. Where is it? In New Jersey. That's a loss. Yeah. Purdue. That's a loss. Illinois. That's a win. Minnesota. Where is it? So, 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 so hold on. So here we are. Okay. At the end of October, we're going into the first weekend of November. They yeah. are one, two, three, five. They are five and three. Five and three okay. going into November. I, I think that is fair. <laughs> All right. Then they play Nebraska. Or excuse me. Then they play Minnesota. Where is it? Nebraska. They have a shot, but I'm, a, I'm still going to say loss. Okay. Then they go to Michigan. I it's it's a loss. I love the head of the Tyson. <laughs> I think it's a loss. All right. Uh then home to Wisconsin. It's a loss. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I was uh and then Mike and, said, wait, and then Mike, they, wait a minute. Mike says Nebraska didn't do too bad last year though. Uh they went they three, were and three and nine, buddy. Nine. They went three and nine. And then the last game is uh, Iowa loss. Yeah. So they, they could go into November not winning a game. Yeah. Um, now, that being said, uh, in Kabuto, I don't know how tongue in cheek you're being. I read it tongue in cheek. He says the best three and nine team of all time. Like legitimately they kind of were the, one of the best three and nine yeah. teams of all time. I mean, yeah, not, he says not joking. They, they, yeah. They you lost shouldn't be by touchdown to Oklahoma. They lost by three to Michigan state. They lost by three to Michigan, uh, seven to Minnesota, five to Purdue, uh, 
their worst loss was to Ohio State nine. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, it was it was Ohio State nine, and then Wisconsin. Oh no, it was. It it actually still was. And then um, seven point loss to to Wisconsin and a seven point loss to Iowa. So yes, their only loss of more than a score was to Ohio State. Every other, every other, could have been one on the last drive. I mean, they had to go. They had to go for two. But literally every other game, they were a drive away from taking the lead. They are legitimately the best three and nine team of all time. No, you're 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 right, um, Michael. Um, Oklahoma did lose to almost everybody. <laughs> it seemed that way. Yeah, it's, the that that was just two universes converging right there. The team that almost <laughs> lost to everyone, and the team that almost beat everyone. Tulane, Nebraska, West Virginia, Kansas State. Texas, Kansas. Yeah, they, they almost they almost lost to a bunch of teams. <laughs> All right. Um, number four on the list is Minnesota. Um, to me, I, I think Minnesota, I think, could be I, these top four teams. Can, can we put them in a bag and just sort of shake them up? That, that's, Do you that's really, legitimately that's really like any of these teams in the top four that much more than any of the others? I mean, yeah, in this I've, list, he has them Wisconsin one, Purdue two, Iowa three, Minnesota four. And while I don't disagree with that, I think you could also turn it upside down, and that's almost as likely. Almost. I don't like Wisconsin at four. Wisconsin's better than that. Like, Wisconsin is maybe just a split better than these other teams. But it's really just a tiny split. And it honestly might just come down to, like, Wisconsin, like I said, tiny bit better. It might come down to, like, who plays who at home, who plays who off of what games. If some team gets involved in an overtime the week before a game where they have to play a big opponent and they're extra tired, that's a huge thing that... I I just don't see any of these top four teams being significantly better than the others. See you, Kabuto. Um, I I just don't see it. So, I'm. So my rankings, Jared. My rankings, rankings. What I have, I have number one is Purdue. Okay. Number number two I have is is uh, Minnesota, and then and then Wisconsin, and then Iowa at four. Here's, I don't disagree. And, and the reason I, and the I, reason, I personally would put Wisconsin at one, but I, I can't the, tell the, you you're wrong. The reason, the reason for that. Yeah. The reason for that. I look, you, you look at who Wisconsin and well, you look at who everybody plays. Wisconsin plays their, their, their crossover matchups is against Ohio state and Michigan state. Purdue. They don't, they don't get to put, they don't, they're, they don't get to play Ohio State or Michigan State or Michigan this year, and their crossover yep. against Penn State is in Purdue. Yeah, this year, so they have a very favorable they have a very favorable um, schedule this year. So I, I I'd probably put Purdue Purdue above that, but Wisconsin does have to replace quite a few quite a few uh, players and. And Mertz isn't really the quarterback that we thought he really could have been. Maybe, maybe, maybe he gets back to what we think he can be, but he man, needs some help. He, he, own, he, need, he needs help. Man, is that right? He he tossed only eight touchdowns last year to six interceptions in conference play. That's not going to win you many games. Yeah, um, he, he is. He is a typical Wisconsin quarterback. Yeah. Uh, that is true. I, I, with all due respect to Graham Mertz, I think it was a, I think it was a poor choice to go to Wisconsin. 
that's I don't think I don't think that's where you go to be developed as a quarterback. Yeah. Um, and right. like I know there are people who are maybe out there going, but 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 uh, Russell Wilson's a is a is a North Carolina State developed quarterback. He just happened to play his last year in Wisconsin. That that's a Wolfpack kid. Let's be honest. In the same way that uh, Joe Burrow is actually an Ohio State kid, that's Russell Wilson's actually a Wolfpack kid. Let, let, that's that's yeah. where the actual development happened. All right, so I give you I give you my top four. What who, what do you have, Jared, for the West? I'm going Wisconsin one. Um, I'm going Purdue two. Um, I my my biggest issue I have right now is sort of replacing some of their offensive talent, and uh, for as far as Purdue goes, um, replacing some of that offensive talent. They lost Dave Bell, um, and you know it's their their defense was never consistent. Uh, so we'll see if they can improve that. I mean, they they, they do have their uh, their quarterback back yeah. as well, and he and he's, and he's he threw yeah. all over the field last year. And I'm keeping him at number two. Um, mm-hmm. I just like Wisconsin a little bit more. Um, and and for the record, having I, I don't know what to do with Iowa or Minnesota as far as like three versus four, four versus three. Again, I I see these teams as pretty comparable um and quite frankly i don't actually see purdue as a better team than iowa or 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 minnesota i just see a more favorable schedule if that makes sense i think that they again like i have wisconsin like half of a notch above iowa minnesota and purdue just like a half a notch above them and the only reason I'm giving Purdue a much, uh, you know, like the number two spot is, again, because of what you said about the favorable, the favorable schedule, and, and which I, quite frankly could catapult them to number one, which is why, like, mm-hmm. while I am not agreeing with you, I'm also not disagreeing with you. You very well could be right. Um, and, I, and, Iowa, and Iowa plays both Michigan and Ohio State this year, too. Yeah. Again, it's, favorable schedule for Purdue. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's, of course, the thing. I don't. Uh, is Michigan uh, actually? I, I don't know if I. I just don't think Michigan's gonna be that good this year, quite frankly. So I, I don't know yeah, how big of a deal that too. is. So yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, twist my arm. I think I'll go Minnesota at three, Iowa at four. But I, if you want to flip those around, I don't give a shit. That's that's fine. Okay. All right, Kyle, uh, super quick. Uh, Offensive player of the year. This article puts C.J. Stroud there. Who am I to disagree? I think he's winning the Heisman this year. I think Ohio State wins the Big Ten this year. Um, That's fine. Defensive player of the year, Jack Campbell. Uh, Well, (laughs) Michael says, what about JSN? Uh, they'll, They'll give it to the quarterback first. They, they just will. He's going to have more stats because any stat JSN gets, Stroud's also going to get. Like, JSN might get it if Stroud maybe misses a couple games due to an injury or something like that. If something like that happens, um, then it's probably Henderson, actually. <laughs> like, it's just, it's hard for a wide receiver to get it. It is just hard for a wide receiver to get it. Um, defensive player of the year, they have Jack Campbell of Iowa. Um I think that's fine. Um, I think it. My my thing I wonder about is if we have maybe Jack Sawyer or or one of the Ohio State defensive ends rack up a bunch of sacks, or or you know if something along those lines happens, um, or or maybe if you know like Hickman gets a lot of interceptions, especially if he can return some of those. Uh, I I think are also possibilities. Um, I think I think I always look to the defensive ends first, mostly to win those defensive player of the years, though. Uh, Campbell is fair. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. The, the, the prediction's absolutely fair. Yeah, it's it's absolutely fair. I'm not going to disagree with it. Uh, Coach of the year, Ryan Day. Like, nah, they already gave him one. They're not going to give him another. Ohio State. I, it's a miracle they gave it to him once. They don't give this. They don't. 
they don't, they don't give this 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 uh, trophy out to Ohio State coaches hardly ever. It's, I mean, yeah. Tressel never got one. Urban took Urban took a 500 football team and made them an undefeated football team in one year, and they didn't give it to Urban. I'm shocked that they ever gave it to Ryan Day. Shocked. Um. Yeah, top freshman. Nick Singleton of Penn State, running back. Uh. Yeah, I'm going to say eh as well. <laughs> I think that's my response to that one. Yeah, it could be, but eh. Yeah, I'd probably say probably not. Uh, sleeper team, they have Purdue. Uh, yeah, I think that's fair. It, it's hard. No, I don't know. It's, it's, it's Rutgers. It's Rutgers. Yeah, pr- actually. Yeah. Mike says Rutgers. Yeah. You know, I think that's actually, I don't, is it a sleeper team if you're predicting them at number two? Like, I don't know how you, Yeah. I don't know how, if, if you're sitting here predicting them as the second team in the West, are they really a sleeper team? Um, the, uh, best coordinator hire Jim Knowles Ohio State I, I think that's that's a given yeah <laughs> uh, hardest team to evaluate Penn State hard disagree it's Michigan State yes I agree Michigan State hard disagree breakout player Marvin Harrison Jr. Ohio State yeah absolutely I'm 100% yes. they come back player uh, Ibrahim of Minnesota uh, for the comeback I hope so player. for his sake. I hope so too. Yeah, he's he's an I, excellent I, I, running back. I have a co I have a coworker who grew up and lived in um, Minnesota and is a Gopher fan. And man, I when I saw him that that day after Ohio State beat Minnesota, I said I just looked at him and I said, "Man, I feel sorry for him. That sucks." Yeah that that was that was terrible. And yeah, that was terrible. I, so I, I really hope it is Ibrahim for. Because uh, uh, th- does Ohio State even have anyone who would qualify as a comeback player? I mean, le- legitimately, is, 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 uh, Proctor. 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 Yes. Okay, yeah, I, I stand corrected. It could be Proctor. That's fair. Mm-hmm. I got shut down on that one. I was about to say I didn't think Ohio State had any, but I was wrong, and that's okay. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, Kyle, do you have anything else? Maybe uh, any other questions or any other thoughts on how you think the big Ten's going to shake out this year? I, I, yeah, I, I think unless Barty or Wisconsin or Purdue really, make us really rethink of them teams like those teams are like, wow, they're, they're actually really good this year. I think big 10 is just really down this year. I, th- I think, it, I think it's, I think it's Ohio state really up. Then you got some teams that's like Ohio state's S tier, nobody quite an A tier. And then B tier, you got a bunch of te- You got a bunch of teams there. Don't disagree. It's it, but it, to be fair though, Ohio state has a ton of B teams. I feel like the vast majority of the conference is a B team. It's just that they don't, as you said, have anyone in A or anyone other than Ohio State in S. Yeah. But it's a, it's they're all B teams, really. Mm-hmm. Penn State, Michigan State, Michigan, uh, basically the entire West. <laughs> all yeah. B teams. Illinois versus Rutgers and Indy. Oh, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would, we'd end the podcast. If that happens, that if that happens, we'll preview that game and then end the podcast. That's, that's how that'll go. Yeah. Most of the big 10 are backups or backups to our backups. There's a, there's a few guys I would poach, um, but not a lot. Not a lot. Yeah. 
Hence why I said most. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I, I know you said most. I, I'm, I'm well aware. There, there, uh, I, I think I would love to have a better uh, fifth offensive lineman. Um, I think I would love to have um, a, a, like an elite safety. Like I would definitely, uh, I definitely steal a safety from somewhere, I think. Um, Minnesota has an ex, uh, you, you would steal whiskey's guard. I'd steal, uh, Minnesota's center and, and transfer him to guard is what I would do. Yeah. That's, I think I forget his name, but I, I think, I think that would be a guy who I would steal if given the opportunity. So yeah, if, if given the opportunity to steal anyone from the big 10, I think it would be him. He's very good. He's very, very good. In fact, he's so good that you might actually keep him at center and, and bump one of Ohio State centers out to guard. Like, he's that good. <laughs> yeah. All right, Kyle. Um, you have anything in Kyle's corner? How, how nice How nice it must be to be an Ohio State uh, playmaker or, or more, more so the quarterback for Ohio State in in 2022 right jared how, how or, nice it, how right. nice it must is this be an, is this some nil conversation it, it is it is uh real quick uh, <laughs> uh cj stroud gets to drive um uh, not just not just one car but he, he's going to be swapping cars throughout the season here as part of his nil deal and he gets to uh, uh <laughs> reportedly from abc6 uh <laughs> drove away from a um a Mercedes uh, AMG G wagon, which um, that thing nice. is uh, thing is a uh, two hundred grand machine. There now, Kyle, does he own that or is he leasing that? Um, I'd want to say he's probably leasing it. Would be my guess because it says here that according to ABC Six, he's he, he says he's trying out multiple vehicles throughout the duration of his deal, swapping vehicles every forty five to sixty days. So. Yeah, yeah, I would say lease. Lease you know, at you know, no drive. charge. Lease, lease at no charge. <laughs> yeah, a free lease. He's uh, he's basically he's basically on a subscription model. Drive a car for a month or two, turn it in, get a new one. Yeah, quite frankly, that's better than owning. Free. Listen, I'm, I am not a lease guy. I don't think uh, leasing a car is a good idea. But when the lease is for zero dollars. You know, I think I'd make an exception. Yeah. <laughs> when, when the lease is for zero dollars. Why not? How nice it must be. <laughs> hey, he's no, worked for it, man. He's worked very, he very hard yeah. for that. No, absolutely. One but of no, the very few people it. in the world who can do what he can do at the level he does it. He, he yes. deserves everything he gets. Uh, one question, one question to you, Jared, before, before we wrap it up. Okay. Would you, would you buy a piece of, um, piece of that turf, old turf, Ohio state turf? Probably not for the money they're asking for it. How big of a piece and like how, 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 how many pieces are they cutting it into and how much are they charging per, per, per piece? Use it in mass yeah. pad, you always be touching grass. I mean, sorta. Sorta. Here, here's the thing, though. You have that as a mouse pad. I feel like those little uh, ground-up tires are just going to be, like, down into my into my uh, fan for my PC. Do you think, yeah. you think they get rid of the tire first? Yeah, yeah. And this is, and this is yeah, this is that turf, yeah. For, for how bad it looked at the end of its tenure. You, yeah, it's I'm not, good. I'm good. You, you're get you're not getting it because it looks good. You're getting it because it was once yeah. a part of Ohio Stadium. Yeah. No, I'm good. I'm good. That's it, Jared. That's all I got. The field didn't have a ton of that when you walked on it. Eh, I mean, it's it's there. I think it's just sort of maybe deep in there. I'm not sure. You miss the grass. Well, I disagree. Have you have you seen Heinz Field in November? 
Have you seen Heinz Field in November? I don't miss the grass. Don't miss the grass at all. I the, the old AstroTurf was terrible. I'm glad the old AstroTurf is dead and gone. Screw that stuff. But the, the stuff that they use nowadays, I think, is the best possible solution. No, it doesn't. I mean, the state, the Heinz Field looks good as a stadium, but look at the grass in November. It's demolished. It's dead. Between the Pitt games, the Pittsburgh Steeler games, and then they do the, uh, whenever it is that, like, Pennsylvania does the, the high school championship games, like, a after that, once you get, like, past that point in the season, it just becomes a slop of nothing. You like muddy games. Well, guess what? You're not playing in it. Like, that terrible surface is bad on guys' knees and ankles and stuff. It gets divity. And when you have divots, people twist shit. It's, it's not good for the player health to... Maybe they could get away with it with Ohio Stadium because at least you're not, you know, having high school games plus professional games and all that shit going on there the way they do at Heinz Field. But, oh, no, I agree. The turf is best for health. Then it's the best because literally nothing matters more than the player health. Literally nothing matters more. Period. Done. Over. Nothing matters more than that. Make sure they're joining you, us in you the You think Discord. it's debatable? <laughs> it's hard to manage the grass north during the winter. I mean, yeah, but also it's the best for the player health. Is is that you don't you think that's debatable? Or you do think that's debatable? I think we compare injuries on turf versus grass. It's more on turf. In the north? You really think so? When the ground freezes and it's as hard as a rock and it's filled with divots and shit? I would love to see a study on that. I mean, I would love to see a study on that. If 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 if, if someone can find that and send it to me, I I would absolutely take a look at it. Um I know you know what you're talking about, Gangland, so I'm not going to be like you're wrong because I know that again, you're you're very knowledgeable in this area, but I have a hard time seeing it. I would again, I would love to maybe see numbers on that. So, all right, Kyle, that's it. That's the end of the show. Um, the uh, ending band for this week is Pray for Sleep. Uh, so we'll be playing them once again. So with all that being said, I would like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Pray for Sleep. <laughs>